Hello everyone, it's Jen Jahadi and this is a cheat day in chess where I'm going to look at some dramatic chess positions and today um, eat this donut. Mm. Mm. That's so good. Oh my god. That's really good. Today we're going to look at a game between Anna Zatonsky and Jennifer Yu from the 2017 U.S. Women's Chess Championship. So let's get into the action. Here's a position in which Anna Zatonsky, four-time champion, is playing against Jennifer Yu, who is a gold medalist and a National Girls Invitational champion. Anna's playing black, and as they say, all rook end games are drawn. She has a lot of different ways to draw here. Maybe she could just move her king to b3, or she could start checking with her rook on the side. Notice that even in this position, as the king starts to advance and connect with the pawn, this is a draw too, because at any moment, Anna could simply sacrifice his rook for the pawn, and now we are going to force you to sacrifice your rook for our pawn, and it's just going to be king versus king and a total draw. But let's take a look and see what actually happened. She just blundered. Stunning. Okay. Stunning. How could she have blundered like this? Jennifer is going to win. Let's watch her go under. Oh gosh, and look at Jennifer crossing her arm. She knows now she's got it. Okay. Yeah, I need mean, a little smile right there too. She's stunned after this terrific fight. So she, she's yeah. winning the game. King to B3, Anna was obviously mm -hmm. trying to squeeze squeeze out the victory, mm -hmm. brought her king up, rook, rook over, king, push, and then this check, Anna thought she was just collecting. And she's resigned! Yes. She, Anna thought she was just collecting this pawn, but with the move king c2, the double th the threat of checkmate on one, as well as king take d1 winning the rook, caused Anna Zatonsky to resign. Wow. Whoa. What, an what a hit. What a blunder. And let's take a look and see what happened and got uh, me and Yaz and Maurice so upset. Well, the move here, rook to d1 check, and it's a very unfortunate six-hour blunder here um, by Anna. Now, the king um, just played king c2, and this move is a killer because it's attacking the rook on d1, but the blind spot that Anna probably had was that after rook takes d6, it's just checkmate in one move. After rook a8 check, you're forced to play rook a6, and now it's checkmate. And if only, if only, we could somehow just evaporate that pawn on b4, we could play king to b4 and it would be a total draw. But alas, um, Zatonsky blundered and the game turned into a win for the young Jennifer Yu. But the reason I showed you this position is not just to show um, a six hour blunder. That happens at even the most elite levels of chess competition, right? Players are tired after playing for hour after hour with um, no donates to sustain them. But um, in this particular case, it reminded me of a, one of my favorite positions of all time. And maybe it's one of your favorites too, or it will be after this video, which is called the Saavedra position. It's so beautiful that I've also combined it with some of my other favorite things. Yes, you guessed it, donuts and cupcakes and you can even see it in the screen behind me right there's a little surveyor position over there so for those of you who haven't seen it we're going to take a look right now so this position was originally thought to be a draw white plays c7 trying to make a queen of course too bad the rook can't go to the eighth rank because the pawn would just take it and we can't get behind the pawn yet either so we're gonna have to try to keep checking because a queen versus a rook is winning so we can't let white just queen so now the white king is gonna come up the board after rook d5 check we better keep going on the b file because if we go on the c file you can play rook d1 check threatening the skewer and if you make a queen you're actually gonna lose the game so white would have to scramble back Therefore, white's simply going to play king b4. Now after rook d4 check, king b3, rook d3 check, king c2. This is white's idea. There's no rook d0. So what can black do now? Well, pause the tape if you haven't seen it before. Because this is a nice one. Rook to d4 looks like it saves the day. Because now, when white makes a queen, 
There's this lovely move, rook to c4, check, forcing queen takes c4, and that's stalemate on the board. Of course, a massive achievement for a black. They were going to lose this position, so we're really happy to have that. And I think I deserve another bite of my donut, don't you? Mm. So. Mm. God. So instead, what do white do here? This is what the Spanish priest Saavedra found that completely turned around the evaluation of this position. Well, pause the tape, and if you find this and you've never seen it before, you really do deserve a donut because it's um, a fantastically creative move. It's not that hard to calculate, actually, but it's not easy to see. So um, you play C8 equals Rook. Beautiful under promotion, as we call it. And now the problem is, of course, Rook C4 is no longer a brilliant stalemating trick because after Rook takes C4, not only are you not stalemating, but you're actually getting checkmated yourself, right? So that's the end of the story. So the only way for black to stop rook a8 mate is to play rook a4. But now white has the double attack that recalls the game between Anna and Jennifer with just king to b3, right? Now you're attacking that rook on a4 and you're also threatening checkmate on c1. So the game is totally over. Uh, fantastic move, c8 equals rook. We're going to be doing more of this here on a cheat day in chess. So I hope you guys will join me. S subscribe to the U.S. Chess Federation's channel for more videos. And also you can find me, Jen Shahadi, on Instagram and Twitter. Until next time, uh, make your cheat days and your chess tactics count. Mm. Mm.